Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, on this last day of August, this nearing the end of the summer, which uh, we, we all don't, uh, don't look forward to. I look forward to many more days of wonderful weather, which we can get, um, which we will get, because it's, you know, September, and, um, you know, we're going to definitely bask in this weather for as long as we possibly can. However, that being said, it's pretty much the end of the summer, so I want to welcome you to Secrets of the Sire. We're going to be doing an awesome fall TV preview episode tonight. It's just me. You're lonesome. You only, you only get me tonight. But uh, actually, you get me, and then you also get our, our wonderful, talented crew behind here. We've got uh, Sam uh, Leibowitz, our engineer. He is back there, and uh, anybody viewing us on Periscope or Facebook, it takes me so long to get these things set up in the tripod. So we're not going to actually show Sam, unless he wants to jump in the screen, which he totally can. Uh, and we've got Rob as well. Um, he is doing our engineering uh, tonight, which is awesome as well. And welcome to our Periscope peeps at Faux Show 767 for joining us. Um, we are Secrets of the Sire. We are a live... Um, radio show every week. We talk comics, movies, TV, pop culture. Uh, and like I said, we're going to be doing an awesome fall preview show. But first, we're going to do a little house cleaning. I uh, want to say happy anniversary to my wife, Christina, who may or may not be on. I'm not sure. Thank you for all the love on Periscope from everybody else. We, uh, we had a wonderful day today. We did some lunch today. Uh, we have a, a six-month-old at home. So any, any and Plus, I must be doing a radio show. But, so any hope of doing something at night has just gone out the window. We actually went to a concert. We went to see Goo Goo Dolls a couple weeks ago. And we just were counting down the clock, waiting until when can we get home, when can we get home, when can we get home. So we've decided any, any event we're going to do now is going to be completely in, uh, during the day. So that's the, the first thing. My, my love of my life... Happy anniversary to my wife, Christina. Um, this is TalkingAlternative.com. It is internet radio for everyone. Uh, we also get turned into a podcast afterwards, so find us on SoundCloud, SoundCloud.com slash Secrets of the Sire. Go check us out on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Secrets of the Sire. And uh, Twitter, I'm at Michael underscore Dolce. That's my name, Mike Dolce. Good to have you there. Okay, we also want to thank our, for our, new, our first patrons. We're on Patreon.com, so you go to Patreon.com slash, you guessed it, Secrets of the Sire. I actually also took my domain name, MichaelDolce.com, and if you type that in, so M-I-C-H-A-E-L-D-O-L-C-E.com, it'll take you to, to the Secrets of the Sire Patreon page. Uh, what is Patreon? Patreon is a crowdfunding website. Uh, it's, it's a monthly subscription-based thing, so lots of podcasts up there. Uh, we are trying to grow the show. Uh, we've got a nice loyal following, about 3,000 people a week, which we love, which actually is maybe even a little bit more than that. Um, maybe three to 4,000 a week, and we want to keep growing. We want to keep giving you guys the stuff that you guys enjoy, uh, which is comics, movies, TV, and pop culture. So with that being said, again, welcome to everyone on the Periscope feed, at Michael underscore Dolce. Welcome to Craig Caruso, who just joined on the Facebook feed. Um, we are going into fall TV preview, but before we do, let's, 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 get, let's put a little bow on the summer season, right? I mean, summer season kind of came and went. Um, winners and losers, you know, who's... This has been an odd summer. Now, and, and maybe you guys agree, I don't know. Um, it's been an odd summer in the sense that there is no, there was no, like, definitive blockbuster, right? I mean, you have Civil War. Don't get me wrong. Civil War was a blockbuster, but kind of, I don't know, it was kind of like a, yeah, it just, it, it, was, it, was, a, it was a great movie. Um, it, it was, the good and the bad of what Marvel does, right, is they're doing these, like, serialized movies, right? I mean, that's essentially what it is, right? It's like a TV show in movie format. Like, so every year, you get maybe three episodes of this, like, TV show that kind of interconnects and moves together. Um, it's like a three-hour movie, so you're essentially binging on this serialized storytelling. And it's, it's amazing, right? It's amazing because what they're doing is what they did in the comic book universe, but they're actually doing it in, in film, and obviously you have all these people that want to copy. You had Sony wanted to copy with the Spider-Man universe. That failed. Uh, you wanted uh, DC to copy it now with, uh, with their Justice League and, and their initial offerings. The first two movies that kind of came out kind of failed, especially the Batman v Superman. You know, so Marvel's doing their thing, and it's awesome, and it's great. So we're not taking anything away from that. But downside to having what they do 
how much were you guys really looking forward to the movie? I was looking forward to Civil War. I enjoyed it. I thought it was awesome. Uh, we've talked about this before. You can actually go on the SoundCloud page um, and, and dig up many podcasts. We did a podcast the day it released. We did a podcast review afterwards. We talked ad nauseum about it, and we'll, we'll do it again for Doctor Strange in November. But I wasn't blown away by it. So I'm going to say it's a winner. Sam's going to jump in here as well, too. Yeah, yeah. I, I just... Yeah, I just wanted to say that, um, you know, for me, yeah, uh, for me, the the um, Civil War, while I was looking forward to the movie, by the time it was over, I felt like it was a placeholder movie. Yes. Like it wasn't yes. anything that significant in and of itself. But it felt like, okay, it's mm -hmm. leading up to whatever the next thing is. Right, and, and, and Craig Caruso actually just commented, he said, Spider-Man is what's up in Civil War. Yes, Spider-Man was the best part of Civil War, but just like what Sam said, and I'm not sure if we got it in the uh, feed or not, um, you know, he was saying it felt like a placeholder movie, and it kind of was, right? I mean, it's kind of just setting up the next, you know, stage of Marvel movies, which is Guardians 2, which is Spider-Man Homecoming next year. So, in a sense, yeah, it was great. I'll, I'll declare it a winner. There's no question it was a winner, but it didn't, you know, didn't really move the needle, and I think that's kind of where I felt was a little funny. Deadpool was not a summer blockbuster because it came out in February, but Deadpool actually, I think, had a bigger, you know, impact all is said and done. So, but you can't count that as a summer winner. We'll count Civil War as a summer winner, but kind of a tepid winner, and I think most of these things are kind of tepid winners, right? I think Star Trek... A great movie. Like, Star Trek was a really great movie. It was a great nondescript movie. By the, end, by the end of walking out of Star Trek, I kind of felt like, in general, and we welcome at Blush07, who just joined us as well, too, on the Periscope feed, talking summer wrap-ups, getting into the fall TV preview soon, but you know, Star Trek was like, I, I was like watching an episode. It was like watching a really well-written episode. With the characters, the characters were awesome. Um, the plot lines were awesome. The setup was awesome. Look, Kirk is debating whether or not he wants to continue as Starfleet Commander by the end. Due to the action and due to the resolution, he's, he's more excited about it than ever. Uh, Spock has some doubts about this or that, and then he comes out on the end, and it's great. You know, they had the little George Takai reference in there, too. It was a nice little Easter egg. Great movie. Again, just a great movie, but overall, like, I mean, I just felt like I was watching another episode of TV. And the thing that, like, I thought it was such a missed opportunity. I mean, this is the 50th anniversary of Star Trek first coming on TV. They could have done so much with that, and I felt like, you know, it was like, oh, we'll show a picture of, like, the original cast from the movie, you know. Yeah. And like, oh, my God, yeah. come on, guys. You, you could have really, like, I think they, they, they had a mi real missed opportunity where they could have played a lot more homage to the original TV series sure. within the movie itself, within the script itself, sure. that they didn't do. And that's uh, to me, was like a missed opportunity. Uh, and I, ag I agree, too. I, but I think that's, I guess, the overall tone of the summer, right? If we're putting a bow on the summer... Yeah. Yeah. Everything about this summer, and not just comics and movies and TV in general, it feels like it was kind of ho-hum. It was, it was, I mean, we've had great weather. I can't really complain about the weather. Yet, I don't know, there was maybe a heat wave at the end of the year, but it, it didn't really even feel like summer until maybe the end of July. It, and now summer's kind of over. It already starts feeling like fall. Like, or, amazingly enough, it's starting to feel like fall, like immediately. And, and, and again, we're talking about comics and movies and TV and how does this relate? It relates because I think the movies were kind of the same way. It never felt like there was this summer blockbuster. Listen to the, some of the movies that are coming out next year, though. Spider-Man Homecoming is coming out in July next year, July 7th. That is July 4th weekend. That is the first Spider-Man movie under the Marvel umbrella. How exciting is that? Ooh. A month earlier, Wonder Woman. The trailer looks fantastic. Yeah, that looks good. First time Wonder Woman ever. I mean, amazing. Like, that is the kind of stuff where I'm like, I'm getting excited right now. Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Can it be as good as the original? Can it be better than the original? Kurt Russell's going to be in that one. You know, there's, there's some really great movies on tap where I'm already kind of getting excited for it. And then, of course, at the end of the year, uh, will be Justice League. But, um, you know, but still, there'll be some, a lot of hype going into that as well. And we're going to talk about Justice League Dark, which just got signed and kind of put the kibosh in the Gambit movie. I'll explain what that is uh, later on in the show, too. And Ben Affleck just teased his Batman villain mm -hmm. uh, in his solo film coming out in 2018. And, and Ben Affleck can do no wrong right now, right? I mean, I guess we're going to call Ben Affleck a summer winner, right? We're not going to say Batman v Superman, even though mm -hmm. it was March. Again, it was March. See, all like the big movies did not come out in the summer. So how yeah. can we even call it 
uh, you know, what we will say is Ben Affleck was a summer winner. Why? Because the aftermath of Batman v Superman, the precursor leading up to Suicide Squad, he was the best part. If you watch uh, Honest Trailers, which I, I'm sure my audience out there is familiar with that. It's on YouTube, spoof, it's from Screen Junkies, they do an awesome job. And they basically have like the movie guy voice giving an honest interpretation of every movie in trailer format. And it's fantastic. So it's it's kind of like, it's just knocking jokes after jokes after jokes. But they also kind of say they're like, and who knew Ben Affleck was the best part of the movie? <laughs> you know, and that was one of their big like jokes. And I was like, yeah, I mean, who would have thought that out of everything? And they were trying to sum up the plot. And they're like, it's Lex Luthor, and it's Doomsday, and it's Death of Superman, and it's, oh my god, they crammed everything into one movie. And it's like, it, it, absolutely true. And again, we're not going to we're not gonna go ad nauseum. We, we you can go check out our SoundCloud page, soundcloud.com, slash but, Secrets of the Sire. But don't you think, like, uh, uh, um, Suicide Squad was a bit of a summer what? surprise, in a way? It, you know what, though? Suicide Squad actually is a, a winner. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to categorize Suicide Squad as a winner. Why? Because, because of how bad Batman v Superman was, right. the amount of pressure that was put on Suicide Squad to do well, and, look, financially, it did well. Um... Critically, no, it didn't. Um, Fan-wise, it did. Like, fan-wise, look, it was... People went in with low expectations because, look, these are not iconic characters. The only complaint was that the most iconic character, Joker, wasn't in it enough. Right. You know, that was kind of the big thing. So I'm going to count Suicide Squad as a winner. And yes, it is a summer blockbuster, and it became... But if you're looking back in 2016, what's the movie of the year? Deadpool. When did it come out? Uh, February. February, yeah. I mean... What was the most talked about movie of the year, aside from Deadpool, in terms of success? I'm going to say Batman v Superman. Batman v Superman, yeah. Came but, out in March. But, but, right. <laughs> Came out in March. Biggest flop of the season has to be Ghostbusters. Yeah. Has to be Ghostbusters. It was a hundred and something million dollar budget, 70. They only made, I mean, I, I, I don't know the exact numbers. I'll get them uh, during the break or whatever, but uh, that was a big flop. Yeah. And, of course, you, you can hide behind the fact that if, uh, if, if you didn't like the movie, you're sexist. You can hide behind that any, any which way you want. Overall, though, critics were, for the most part, writing that. It just wasn't very funny. And I've talked to people that have seen it. I personally am going to wait until it comes on cable because I have no desire to see. I have no desire to see a remake of one of the greatest movies of all time. I don't care if it's four women. I don't right. care if it's in. Why are you remaking that? You could have had four of the hottest actors, male actors in Hollywood, remaking Ghostbusters. And I would have sat there and say, why can't they be their son? Right. You know, why can't the four of them be the daughter, or one of them be the daughter? Heck, you could have had Leslie Jones's character be the daughter of Ernie Hudson, yeah. and that would have made the entire movie. Exactly. Like, exactly. I mean, how amazing would that have been if Leslie... And, and, you know, not only that, man, we should have wrote this movie. Like, what are we yeah. doing? They should, have, yeah. they should have consulted us. Exactly. If you have her come in as, as Ernie Hudson's kid, she's the only one with the history, the actual history, right. to, uh, to, to bring this team together. I mean... What, what an homage to the original that could have mm -hmm. been. Mm -hmm. Plus, it would have flipped it around and actually made the black female character the most prominent in the movie. Right, Which exactly. is the argument for why you didn't like it, was, oh, you don't like female characters. No, we don't like bad movies. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's all. Especially all right. poorly written movies. Exactly. All right. Welcome at Billy Williams 46. We are going to commercial break. When we come back, we are going to do a little fall TV fill in the blank. We're going to be uh, looking forward. We've got a lot of great, great TV shows coming up that we want to know about. So when we return, fall TV preview, Walking Dead, Arrow, Green, uh, uh, that was Arrow, uh, Walking Dead, Arrow, Flash, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and more. Secrets of the Sire. Hi from Halifax. Hi from New York City. TalkingAlternative.com when we come back. <laughs> You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Hello, I'm JC. I'm Joan. And, and welcome, welcome to, to 21st, 21st Century, Century Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. We bring education, insight, knowledge, awareness, trouble, craziness, and fun. 
for you, the entrepreneur who's looking to build your business and your community. Listen every Friday from noon to 1 Eastern on talkradio.nyc. And you can tweet us at 21st CE Radio or Talk Alternative. Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. Welcome back. Secrets of the Sire. We do this every week. TalkingAlternative.com. You just log on to TalkingAlternative.com and you'll hear my voice. That's it's just that simple. We talk movies, comics, TV, pop culture, music. We have some great guests. We've had Kevin Bacon on. We've had Chris Cornell on. Uh, we've got some great guests coming up uh, in, the, in the latter part of the year. i got to say, I actually really enjoy having uh, Rob Kay from the uh, Rob and Callie show doing the engineering behind the scenes. I feel like a full house. I feel like we, 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 we've got a nice... Uh, vibe of energy going here, and as always, we got Sam Leibowitz, uh, who is usually the trusty engineer. He's he's gonna he's gonna be helping us out in a bit. But um, we were talking about uh, Ghostbusters, and I have the exact numbers here, and I will read it for our audience. Um, it the budget was 144 million dollars. The opening weekend was forty-six million dollars. It needs to make about four hundred million worldwide to break even. So far, so far, it has earned just over half of that. That's a big bust. It's just a big bust, and we kind of we kind of bumped up against the commercial break. And I don't want to I don't want to you know dwell on the summer too much longer. I actually just thought we would do it for one segment, but it it really does get us in general. It gets everybody in general to take a classic movie and kind of butcher it the way they did. And it has nothing to do with misogyny. It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with story. It just wasn't very funny. Um, I assume you know some people went in four or five weeks after the fact and was like, oh, it wasn't it bad? Oh, I kind of enjoyed it. Um, but every critic I read, I mean, Daily News critic David Hinckley was like, it just wasn't funny enough. You have Kristen Wiig, you have Melissa McCarthy. These are two hilarious women. These are, uh, Kristen Wiig especially, I think is, is just brilliant. She's a brilliant actress. I never got the Tina Fey thing. Like, everyone's like, oh, Tina Fey is so great. I think she's okay. I think her movies are well written, but I wouldn't be like, wow, that's the greatest thing I ever, you know, watched or read. But I think Kristen Wiig, fantastic. Um, and this movie, she just, it just wasn't. It just didn't live up to it. It just wasn't as exciting as it gets with that. Um, and Suicide Squad, yes, we were talking about that. I definitely call it a winner. I definitely think it was, you know, I guess, the summer blockbuster. <laughs> uh, maybe that in Civil War. But uh, overall, it just felt like it was a, it was a, it was a dud of a, of a summer. Yeah. I'd just be curious to know if, if we ever can find out future about the demographics of people who came to see Suicide Squad, whether it did draw in a younger audience or not. Because I kind of felt like the marketing mm -hmm. was very geared towards a younger audience compared to sure. Civil War. So I'm just curious if they were successful in that way, or did it just bring in the same people who went to see Batman v Superman? I think I think it was a little bit of both. Um, but the problem the problem is is that once you have bad word of mouth, yeah, it it it, it kind of blocks those people away from kind of seeing it. That being said, look, it won the box office three weeks in a row. Mm -hmm. They did a nice job putting it in August, not putting it up mm -hmm. against, like, Civil War. Civil War kind of ran its course. Pets, Pets was another big winner this summer. I don't know if you guys... Oh, yeah. oh huge, huge. They're making a sequel of that. It, but it, that, looked, that looked cute and funny. That's your younger yeah, audience. Yeah, That's yeah. where they went to. Um, whereas, you know, with Suicide Squad, look, it's an R-rated movie, so as younger as it can get, they basically wanted to try to tap into the Deadpool audience. Like, that's essentially what it was. Um, and they succeeded. Look, they succeeded to a point. So I'm going to, I'm going to, like I said, we're going to, we're going to make, we're going to call them a winner, uh, for sure. Animated movies were, were big winners this, this, uh, summer and, and myself having a six month old, uh, in a couple of years, I can, I can fully take advantage of all the awesome animated movies. Um, we're going to try to get an Oscar winner on here at some point. Um, he's the Oscar winning director of, uh, Big Hero 6. Um, so we're going to hopefully get him on, uh, the show. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to shoot for it. But again, if you donate, if you back us on Patreon, 
I can get better guests. See, this is the thing. As much as I love this full house of Rob and Sam, I'd like to get Oscar winners. No, yeah. you know, or at least somebody named Oscar. We could at least get that, you know, right? <laughs> like, let's, let's at least do that. Um, so go to our Patreon page. You can actually go to my name, michaeldolce.com. I'm your host every week. Um, and it'll take you to our Patreon page. Or if you're on Patreon, search Secrets of the Sire. Uh, you could back us for a dollar a month, which is really a quarter a show. It's $12 a year. And you get access to a lot of cool stuff. Um, I'm posting new projects up there. Actually, one of the cool things we're doing for the next two weeks, anybody who donates uh, will get a, an exclusive digital version of my comic, The Sire. Um, features the first three chapters, and it's totally free, and you get it because you back. So for a dollar, you can basically get three issues of an awesome comic, a critically acclaimed comic, so be sure to do that. All right, full TV, fill in the blank. Sam is going to help me out here. And uh, Sam, I'm, I'm going to weed through some royalty-free music because I would love to have some applause. Do we have some canned yeah. applause? <laughs> if not, we'll just do the... We'll just do the... <sighs> Okay, good. Now, we're getting technically savvy here, so we'll, we'll, eventually, we'll eventually graduate. Um, all right, fall TV fill in the blank. Sam, let her rip. All right, let's start with Walking Dead. The victim at the end of Negan's bat will be... Not Glenn. Now, this is why I say that, and this is spoiler alert time for anybody. If you, if you're reading, if you haven't read the comics, uh, if you don't want to know anything that has happened in the comics... Uh, well, I guess I just gave it away. But that being said, in the comics, Glenn bites the big one. Uh -huh. I don't think it's going to be him. And that's my only prediction. Who it's going to be, honestly, it could be Michonne. Uh, it could be, although they're saying she's in the clear. They're saying her, Abraham, and Rick are in the clear. These are all rumors. These are not confirmed. I have no inside knowledge on this. Um, I actually know one of the guys that works on The Walking Dead comic book series. I'm going to have him on later on, uh, closer to when the show premieres. Mm -hmm. um, welcome at Lucas PLR13. We basically know someone's going to die, and in the comics it was Glenn. He got the crap beat out of him. He got his eye knocked out, and he's basically holding his eye in the comic, and Negan kind of looks at him and goes, I forget what the exact words were, but it, it was really gruesome. I don't think they're going to repeat it here. Hmm. And the reason they're not going to repeat it is, for the, I think, for a couple of reasons. One, we went through this whole series at the beginning of season six. I believe it was season six or maybe it was season five. I forget what we're up to now. Uh, where uh, Yeah, it was season six because this is season seven. Where Glenn was supposedly dead and he supposedly got eaten by a whole bunch of zombies, which I thought was a complete shock and a complete surprise, considering I knew he was eventually going to die, or at least he did in the comics. So, they did this whole thing. So now, I guess one could say that they're setting up the, re they're setting up the viewer to say goodbye to him, right? Mm -hmm. So, maybe, that, maybe by doing that, they're actually setting us up that, okay, we already thought Glenn was dead once, so now he really will be dead. But no, I think they're going to go a different direction. And I think if I had to put my money on it, uh, it it's going to be his wife in, in this. I think they're going to go a completely different uh, route, and they're going to go with Maggie. She's with child. Now, they've kind of done the pregnancy thing with Lori. That's my, that's my prediction. Uh, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say, so chime in. Again, you can stream us live on Periscope at Michael underscore Dolce, um, and let me know. Who do, you think, who do you think will be at the end of Negan's Bat when we get back to Walking Dead in October? All right, next. Next, let's move over to the DC TV universe. Supergirl landing on the CW is... A good thing. A good thing. A good thing. I'm just going to say it's a good thing. And why is it a good thing? And at Jersey Jedi says his money is on Daryl. Uh, we'll talk about that in the next segment uh, at Jersey Jedi, who's an awesome listener, by the way. He's here every. He's every. He's watching us every week. Very loyal. Very loyal. We love it. We're going to get. We're going to get to that uh, next segment. But Supergirl landing on the CW is a good thing. Why? Because. It just makes sense. It just makes sense to have them all. You know, you've got Arrow, you've got Flash, you've got those, uh, and Flash especially is is one of the best series on TV right now in terms of comic book universe. So to have all three of them working together, like why wouldn't you? You have the same showrunner, you have everything cohesive. Put it on the same network, you can do a lot more crossovers. You can do, you know, they actually did a crossover last year, but it was to save Supergirl essentially. I don't mean save Supergirl the character, but to actually save the show because it just wasn't doing well in the race. Ratings, try to boost it up. The ratings that they're looking for on CBS, I, I just don't know if they're ever going to get. I mean, even Agents of Shield, which we'll talk about in a second, you know, it it doesn't get it just doesn't get the kind of ratings on TV that the movies do in the theaters. So having Supergirl kind of in that cohesive universe, I you know, I think it's just a good thing. I think it's going to help with the story, which is the most important. Cool. 
Next. Next, the Marvel Netflix universe. Luke Cage's new show will do... Better than Punisher. Oh! I think Luke Cage's Punisher. show will be up there because mm. I think... So the, the major complaint with Punisher, and not complaint from the fans, because I'm a Punisher fan, and I love the Punisher, and I think, I think the Punisher in Daredevil uh, is great, and I think him coming out of, um, you know, and getting his own show is, is going to be, you know, so fantastic, and so fantastic. And John Bernthal, he's a Walking Dead alum. He is so great. Um, I think he's going to be great. However... No one has ever done the Punisher right. I don't know why. He did he was he was great. I kind of liken the Punisher to Joey from Friends. <laughs> like he's really great to kind of have in that ensemble cast. He kind of kind of throws things in the mix. And this is not to say the comics don't do. The comics do it great. Garth Ennis's run on, on Punisher, both the Marvel Max run and the regular run, mm -hmm. was outstanding. Outstanding, but for some reason they can never get him right on any kind of movie or TV show. I go back to Dolph Lundgren. I go back to Thomas Chain. I go back to the, whoever the hell that was in Punisher Warzone. That's how nondescript it was. It's an easy movie to get. It's Die Hard. It's an R-rated Die Hard where Die Hard just kills everybody. I mean, it's not hard to do. Actually, maybe it is hard to do because the, the reason Punisher always works well is he is not the guy you're watching. You're watching him to kill a big boss, a gang war, a gang leader, somewhere, someone big. The villains in Punisher make mm -hmm. Punisher who he is. Um, and and he, he's the guy you root for. It's like, this is wish total wish fulfillment. But, but you could say the same thing of Daredevil. But it's in a different way, right? I mean, he's got the blindness. He's got yeah. the, the hyper senses. He's got all these, these cool things. He's got the subplot as he's Matt Murdock, the lawyer. And, yeah. and you can have cases where he's got to defend the people that he actually arrested as Daredevil. Um, you know, you get a whole bunch of different things like that. And so I think Daredevil, you know, Daredevil is a superhero movie, you know, or a superhero story. Yeah. Punisher is more of a realistic guy. It's just a realistic guy going out there and bringing people to justice. I think. Mm -hmm. So anyway. Luke Cage, I think, will do better than Punisher. Luke Cage, well, actually, let's, before we go to next, and I know we're going to probably run up against the clock, but that's okay. It's, it's, it's my show. We get to run up there. Um, Fendi Bands actually says, Daredevil is effing trash. And Ooh. pun. Now, is it tr So, season one, season one was pretty, was pretty great. Season two, I remember um, he, reading some of the critical reviews was not good. Like, they would give it, like, a middling review, and they would kind of say Punisher was kind of outlandish. It, took on more of the comic book e tone rather than the than the grounded realism mm -hmm. so i don't i don't agree i don't think daredevil is trash but uh, everyone's entitled to their opinion and we'll find out what happens luke cage though i think is going to be great and i and, I, and i'll tell you i'll tell you why also because anytime same thing with jessica jones now they base jessica jones off the bendis run um mm -hmm. brian michael bendis basically it was a comic called alias it starred her and luke cage really awesome but the fact that you can play around with these secondary characters in the Marvel Universe gives you this leeway that you don't have anywhere else. Um, oh, he says, yeah, Dee Dee and Punisher, thumbs down. Well, we appreciate the comments f at Fendi Bands. Um, but no, I think Luke Cage is going to be fantastic because, look, there's nobody out there, there's no, look, there's a history to Luke Cage, don't get me wrong, but you're not looking at people, you know, half the people that are going to be, half the audience that's going to be watching Luke Cage wasn't alive in the 70s when he was an actual character that was relevant, right? right, right. So nobody sitting there is going to be like, well, this isn't the Luke Cage I grew up with. Whereas with Daredevil and with Punisher and with all these kind of characters, you do have that. You do have this baggage. And, and we talked about it with Super Batman v Superman. We talked about it with, uh, you know, Suicide Squad, how Suicide Squad has that kind of leeway as well. So in general, I think Luke Cage is going to just be able to go different places and do different things so it's going to be better than punisher we're going to continue this when we come back we are doing a fall tv preview fill in the blank welcome to everyone joining us talkingalternative.com <laughs> Ding 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 
You are listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Hi, this is Rob Kay. And I'm Callie Alpert. And we're hosts of The Rob and Callie Show. Are you looking for a show that talks about real stuff like life, love, the pursuit of being yourself? Then you have come to the right place because we cover topics ranging from chivalry to gratitude to your relationship with money and everything in between. So listen to us on The Rob and Callie Show Tuesdays, 8 to 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on talkradio.myc. Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. Welcome back, Secrets of the Sire. I want to welcome at Dopeman420 and at McLovin the Ladies. Whoa. That's just awesome. That is just awesome. I have to say, I think that lead-in music, the one we just played, is like a perfect uh, music for The Punisher. I think they should oh, use yeah. that on the I'm, series. Yeah, and then, then, then my band can get paid. That's what I'm <laughs> talking about. Uh, if you guys do like the music, uh, you can actually go to our Patreon page, uh, Secrets of the Sire. Uh, just type in my name, Michael Dolce, D-O-L-C-E. Uh, dot com and it'll take you right to our Patreon page. You can back us. Um, if you're an executive producer for five bucks a month, you get access to a library of different things that we have, um, including some interviews um, that we've never even aired before, and we probably won't. So, uh, at St. Louis Blues and at Christina GKS, welcome. But yeah, you can go to our Patreon page. You can back us. A dollar a month gets you access to a whole bunch of stuff, including a free comic book right now. It's a free comic book collection. Collects one, two, and three. Uh, we do this every week on TalkingAlternative.com, so you can always log in over there. You can go to Facebook.com slash Secrets of the Sire, S-I-R-E, and uh, go like our page and, and join the fun. We do this every week. We lead up to the show every week, though. A lot of, lot of cool conversation, a lot of posts. We did a Twitter poll, in fact, um, which I'm going to talk about in a second here and kind of give the results of that at the end of the show. But we, you know, we're doing a fall TV preview. It's, again, fall TV pop culture preview comic book movies and we're doing a full tv fill in the blank so we're going to continue along i got sam my trusty uh, i guess sidekick today look at that now you you've, <laughs> did you downgrade I, did you actually down, is, is engineer engineers t- so rob k is the engineer tonight right. and now you're you're co-host co-host, co-host. So that's, that's, that's a lateral a, move that's a lateral move yeah, that's yeah, a good yeah, one a Side, sidekick move. seems like it's a it's a yeah. down and anybody on pa- and, uh, periscope um I, I always welcome the feedback to including if the mic is too loud uh, we're trying to we're trying to appeal to all audiences here, but all right, let's continue. We have fall TV fill in the blank. All right, I'm going to go with one. Jessica Jones will continue to blank impress. Oh, I think it really? will continue to impress. I think Kristen Ritter is a fantastic actress. She's playing really uh, the role of uh, the role of her life. She's been in a whole bunch of things. She was in the the stupid. Was it the stupid bee in Apartment Twenty Three or something like that? Yeah, I mean that was a, that was a, a, a short-lived sitcom. It had a good following for a little. It had a cult following, um, but this is the role that she's been waiting for. I, I don't. In, you know, the funny thing is, I don't ever envision her as Jessica Jones. No. I, I loved Alias, and Alias was a yeah. great book. Yeah. And um, and I, I, I don't see her as her, but she plays the role really well. Uh, Mentallo as the villain was just was just fantastic in season one. So hmm. I think it's going to continue to impress. I think it's going to continue to move along and move us closer toward defenders. Um, it's gonna it's gonna work well with Luke Cage. It's gonna fit nicely in the universe. You know what I have to say? One thing that I, I really impressed me about the Netflix kind of Marvel universe is how they interweave the the stories so sure. well. In that, like, oh, that DA. Oh, she was also on Daredevil. She was also mm-hmm. on Jessica Jones. Mm-hmm. Oh, and this, the nurse. She. Was was in this one and she was in that one and it's so it's like not just the big characters but the minor characters that that really makes you go oh yeah my uh tv life partner uh jack o'donnell uh who we watch i watch many of these tv <laughs> shows with uh we were actually just we're catching up on our agents of shield season mm-hmm. at the end of season three and um just to your point you know there's a scene where they're on the, where they're watching like a a, a news network a 24-hour news network mm-hmm. and in the bottom scrolling it's like 
gang war in Hell's Kitchen, right. you know, or gang violence in Hell's Kitchen, and it's like, oh, did you see that little Easter egg? Did you see that yeah. little? I mean, look, this is this is a fanboy's wet dream. Everything yeah. that's happening right now, <laughs> um, and we've kind of talked about it before too. Before we move on, real quick. Yeah. So I'm a big Pearl Jam fan. I'm a huge Pearl Jam fan, right? And I love the band. I've always loved the band. Um, and but in the in the late '90s and mid and early 2000s, like you know, they kind of they didn't go anywhere. Like if you were a really true fan, you knew they were there. They were they were touring. They were and they were building up the second act of their legacy, which is to be this amazing touring band. Um, but the hits just weren't on the radio, and people thought like, are they still making music? Or oh, they were popular, you know, ten years ago. Or like you know, call me when it's 1992, and they'll be relevant again. And part of me was always like, oh man. I hope they come out with an album, and I hope they show everybody like how great they are. And now they, they're they're kind of into that upper echelon, um, you know, classic rock band where everyone is now kind of coming out of the woodworks and being like, "Look at them! Oh, so much respect for them!" And oh, I love Pearl Jam! And all of a sudden, I kind of feel like, "Oh, stay away! Like this is my group. This is my you know." And in a way, with the comic book universe, sometimes I feel like that too. I almost feel like this is awesome because we're realizing everything we've always wanted to see. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, no, no, this is my thing. This is the thing that kind of make, made me unique. Now people are I mean, it's, it's amazing. Like, there's, there's uh, it, was it the fear of success or the fear of something like that? I don't know. It's, 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 so, it's so funny. So, yes, this is a fanboy's wet dream. This is everything we've always kind of wanted to happen um, in, in, uh, in this. So it's being realized. So there's, there's a cool part to that, too. Mentioning Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Okay. Ghost Rider added to the mix is... Confusing. Yeah. I, <laughs> Where the hell do you get Ghost Rider and Agents of Shield? That doesn't I, make any sense. I know. I mean, I guess. I mean, I guess you go back to the original uh, pilot episode and it had Deathlock in it, right? Right. Um, and and look, Deathlock and Agents of Shield is not necessarily Deathlock is just a Marvel character. Um, who, by the way, they they picked an Angel alum to play. I'll get the actor's name in a second, but um, oh, right, you know, right. which which was awesome, you know, and it's great, and in and um, you know, great to see the Whedon universe. You know, the actors and actresses, uh, you know, they had Fred from Angel uh, kind of guest on the show as well, too. Um, but, yeah, I don't know how they're going to fit him in, and I don't, I don't know why they're fitting him in. I don't know why Ghost Rider is in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. versus yeah. being in the Netflix universe. Right, he that fits would make in. more sense. He fits completely into the Netflix universe. Why are you bringing him into the Marvel, like... Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So it's confusing. I don't know how it's going to go. And, and look, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., it's one thing if you can if you can watch a show and be like, man, they've got it. These guys just got it. Like Daredevil, oh man, these guys got it. By the way, all the Daredevil writers were all Buffy alum people as well. Oh, really? Stephen S. Denight, oh. uh, Doug Petrie. Doug Petrie wrote some of the best Buffy episodes. So great to see, great to see these guys um, who who did so well in the pop culture realm. You know, ten years ago, still mm -hmm. now bringing their talents to you know mainstream characters who they actually would reference continually. Like a show like Buffy would just reference comic books continually, so yeah. you know it's in good hands, and that's why it's coming out good. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I don't. I don't know what Ghost Rider is going to do. I don't know how they're going to tie it, and I don't know why they're trying to tie it in. So they're going to make him an inhuman. I know it. Wh yeah, right. <laughs> what, what's up with with people's usernames at Hikam Hikam twenty seven. <laughs> at Postal No. Hey, welcome at Postal No. Good to say. Um, good to see you guys uh, chiming us in. Again, you can catch us on Periscope at Michael underscore Dolce. You can catch us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Secrets of the Sire. You can get your own private Google Hangout, by the way, if you back Ooh. us on Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash Secrets of the Sire. Okay, Fall TV, fill in the blank. All next. All right, next. And this one uh, out of <laughs> left field for me Archie Comics Riverdale, the TV show, will be canceled. Oh, very, very quickly. Very quickly. <laughs> uh, all right, I guess technically it's not a fall show because they're going to actually do it as a mid season replacement oh, on the they CW. Are. Uh, it's on the right, look, it's on the right network. It's okay. on the it's on the CW. If there's any place for it, CW is kind of like this small home. You don't need to get killer ratings. Like the one thing with Supergirl, I you know I applaud them for trying to go big, um, but you need you need 10 million viewers to be considered a successful show um, on you know mainstream TV like a CBS or an NBC. Whereas on a CW, you can get two million viewers, and you're like, wow, you're like the second highest rated show in the network. So right. uh, it's in the right place. Um, I, I applaud them for trying. I mean, the Archie Comics, um, which I'm going to get one of the editors on here, is a good friend of mine, Alex Segura. Um, he's one of the editors over there. I mean, they're always doing different... Look, some people want their comics to stay the same. Some people want their characters to stay the same. I think in, the ter in, in, in terms of Archie Comics, they're actually doing different things. And so, you know, bringing a pilot to, to, to air is not a bad thing at all. I think it's a... 
I think it's overall. It's like, I think it's a good thing. So uh, I don't think it's going to succeed, but I like the, I like the effort uh, that they're giving. So. All right. One last one. Go ahead. This fall, the biggest surprise will be blank. Oh boy, that is a good. That's a good question. So let's uh, let's t- let's dive into what we got in the fall first before we answer that question. We have the Punisher. We've got a Cloak and Dagger series coming out soon. We have Luke Cage. We have Iron Fist. I mean, it's it's kind of crazy how this kind of all goes into uh, into the mix. Arrow season five, Flash season three. Um, Legends of Tomorrow season two. You know that's still that's still going. That's I mean, still that didn't get canceled. Wow, it's confirmed. Gotham season three. I mean, you have definitive, you know, TV shows that are actually just continuing, which is which is really good. I think the biggest surprise uh, is going to be the fallout from Walking Dead, and I think in general, I think look, I think every TV show has a shelf life. Uh, I think after watching this is season seven now. And Walking Dead is a great show. It is one of the best shows on TV. Um, but as opposed to that versus like a Game of Thrones, right? Which mm-hmm. is also going into season seven. Both are both are basically firing on all cylinders. Both are at the height of what they're doing. Uh, I think that in general, Walking Dead is going to need to end at some point. I, I think there's only you know the, the you know the Robert Kirkman in an interview once said he's like I always wanted to know what happened when the movie when the zombie movie ended. Mm-hmm. You know what happens next. And that was his whole premise for doing Walking Dead. It's like, well, what happens after you figure out that zombies are real and you have to, and your world is in an apocalyptic state? What do you do next? Uh, it makes for a great comic book series. It makes for an engaging series. And look, it, it works for TV too. But can you imagine? I mean, I can't picture Walking Dead, the TV series, being on for twenty seasons like The Simpsons. <laughs> I mean, they're going to have to continually reinvent themselves. They are with Fear the Walking Dead, and and I can't. Knock AMC for not capitalizing you know, on the success of Walking Dead, creating something that was completely original on the TV. But you're going to have to do something drastic, and eventually these, all the characters are going to have to die. Mm-hmm. As opposed to in a comic book, you know, Rick, Rick Grimes can stay alive for the next 20 years because <laughs> the timing of a comic book is not going to mirror the amount of time that passes in real life. I mean, you know, a year in Walking Dead can be 10 in real life. But Andrew Lincoln's not going to be on the show for 10 seasons. So there has to be an ending. Uh, So I think the biggest surprise is going to be that they're going to do something drastic uh, at Jersey Jedi. See how we we bring this all together. Said he thinks Daryl's on the end of that bat. And we welcome at Vora1058. I think that if they did that... They have the whole thing that if Daryl dies, people riot. I mean, they actually have... I mean, figuratively, I don't think literally. I don't know where they would riot. I mean, I think if, <laughs> I think if, <laughs> if literally people just started rioting like in their local towns or something... I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not encouraging anyone to riot in their local towns, but I would love to see that because I kind of feel like... I kind of feel like when the police are like Halloween batting them nights. down, right, right, exactly. Like, like, how does that exactly work? Is it just like a, a couple of like angry uh, nerds that kind of like run out of there? <laughs> I mean, that in itself could be a fantastic. We are writing fantastic movies tonight, right. by the way. I hope Absolutely. everyone's taking notes. Um, any of our viewers who are watching us on Facebook or are listening to us on Periscope or on TalkingAlternative.com, don't steal our, our wonderful ideas um, before we can go make them real. Um, or maybe do I don't know maybe I'd like to see that I would love to see Night of the Living Nerds you know just out there being like you know the funny thing is that would be an all female riot too because Daryl is such a popular character with the females because uh-huh. there's a rumor is that he's very attractive and females do uh, mm-hmm. kind of find him appealing so yeah biggest surprise of Fall TV is going to be the lack of interest that develops from Walking Dead but that being said I thought Deadpool was going to flop so you know what do I know <laughs> All right, when we come back, we are going to go spinning the racks. We've got some great news. We've got Ben Affleck, man. That guy can do no wrong now. Who would have thunk it when we come back? You are listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Are you into comics, movies, and pop culture at large? What about music and TV? Then you're in for a treat. This is Michael Dolce, your host on TalkingAlternative.com. I've been professionally writing comic books, screenplays, and music articles for almost 15 years. Catch my show, Secrets of the Sire, at its new primetime slot, 
Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and get the inside scoop on the pop culture universe you love to talk about. For more info, go to secretsofthesire.com. TalkingAlternative.com Welcome back, Secrets of the Sire. We do this every week. We talk comics, movies, TV, music, and pop culture every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, TalkingAlternative.com. We're also streaming the show live on Facebook, Facebook.com, slash Secrets of the Sire, and Periscope at Michael underscore Dolce. That's who I am. I'm your host. And check us out on Patreon.com. Uh, you can actually go and just type in Michael. M-I-C-H-A-E-L Dolce D-O-L-C-E dot com and it'll take you right to our, our Patreon page where you can back us and I want to thank our newest patrons uh, Stephanie Dolce no relation except she's my sister um, <laughs> she's also now officially the program director for the show so you get oh. awesome titles and we'll even make little business cards for you if you want uh, maybe I'll throw that in the rewards so any title you get we'll, we'll, we'll give you a template to be the official program director she is now the official program director and all she did was pledge two dollars a month month. Uh, that's $24 a year, and she's the program director. You, too, can be the program director. You can pledge $5 a year and become the executive producer. You get access. Uh, yeah, it's amazing, right? You get access to all of our library of interviews, some that have aired, like the Chris Cornell one and the Kevin Bacon one, and some that we haven't aired. Um, I'll actually be interviewing uh, Peter Bjorn and John, great musicians, uh, this week. So chime in and let me know if you have any questions. be more than happy to ask them, uh, but only if you're an executive producer. I don't listen to anybody else. You've got to be an executive producer. Or you can be a marketing director, marketing director, $10 a month, um, and you get super access to, to basically everything we've ever done. Plus, I'm working on new comic book projects. I just posted a uh, pitch that I sent in to a comic book company. It's an Alice in Wonderland steampunk pitch. You get to read it. Um, hopefully it gets picked. It may or may not get picked. We'll see. I'm competing against a couple other writers for it. But uh, you get to see this, this kind of access. And it's $10 a month to support the show. And last but not least, if you want to actually, I don't know, come on the show, be a guest, be a sponsor, it's $25 a month. Um, we'll read your whatever you want. Just keep it, just keep it clean. You know, if you've got a Kickstarter you want us to, to pimp, we will pimp it on the show. Uh, you get something read on air every week if you become uh, a sponsor for the show. And that, again, is all on the Patreon page. We also want to thank Einar Peterson. He is a dedicated fan. He is doing a dollar a month. So get your name heard. We will, name, we will continually repeat these two guys, uh, or lady and guy, uh, every week until we get some more uh, backers, in which case we'll... Randomly be picking people and thanking them on the air. Um, you get the kind of access you can't get anywhere else. Second happy anniversary to my wife, Christina. She's awesome. She's amazing. We had a great day today. Uh, we dropped the dog at puppy camp, and we dropped the baby off at the, at the in-laws. So we were able to have some lunch. I know she's uh, on the Facebook feed right now, too. So happy anniversary, honey. Uh, you are the love of my life. And uh, we are somehow through two years. How about that? Two years. It's just, it, it only gets better. Right? Right? I don't know. Does it? Uh, maybe. Uh, all right. <laughs> We're spinning the racks. This is a segment we do every week. We just kind of take a look at the news uh, around the comic book pop culture landscape. And uh, Ben Affleck making news this week. Deathstroke will be the main villain in the Bat Ben Affleck Batman movie. And uh, Christina actually just commented in, it better get better. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, the fun times here. Um, yeah, Deathstroke is going to be the villain in the Batman movie. Uh, uh, interesting choice. Um, interesting choice because he is a Batman villain, but he's not an iconic Batman villain. So kudos on the one end for kind of taking, you know, not going like the Penguin route, not going the Joker route, not going the Riddler route, because we've seen them all before. We've seen Mr. Freeze. We've seen Poison Ivy. Those villains also, if you think about it, are kind of being showcased in Gotham right now. So, you know, kind of kind of cool that they were able to, uh, you know, kind of do something different. So, 
in that in that regard, like I have no problem with the Deathstroke look. Deathstroke's a, a badass villain. He's like a Deadpool esque kind of villain. He's look, he's not a wisecracking guy, but he's kind of like an assassin for hire. You never know. He plays both sides. He's you know so awesome. And and Ben Affleck in general, like who to thunk it? Ben Affleck is like the greatest part. But it will, will it be the same guy who played Deathstroke in the movie? Who played it in the no, no, Suicide Squad? It wasn't Deathstroke in the movie. Um, it wasn't. No, Will Smith was playing somebody else in the movie, I believe. Oh, Deadshot. Right, right, right. Um, and, and that just goes to show you my DC knowledge is not very extensive, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it definitely at least works. Uh, so that was that was the big news. And it, look, everyone's really kind of looking forward to it. It's 2018, we're going to have an awesome... Uh, and again, <laughs> you know, I still can't get over saying this. We know it's going to be good. Like, that's, that's the crazy part. Like, Ben Affleck has so completely reinvented himself... To the point where we are not only happy that Ben Affleck is in, it, it, you know, he's the best part of Justice League. Um, Wonder Woman was a close, was a close second, um, but he was the best part. And we're looking forward, we're like, wow, Ben Affleck's gonna do it, man! Like he is gonna do it. He's gonna do like that Ben, you know, that Batman movie that we're looking for. Um, and I think, I think it's just awesome. So, you know, kudos to that. Another DC story. And this one actually has ramifications in the, well, it's not the Marvel Universe, it's the Fox Marvel Universe. Um, Justice League Dark just got greenlit for a new movie. It's, it's, a new, it's basically a team up of the supernatural superheroes, includes Constantine, Swamp Thing, Dead Man, and Zatanna. So all the mystical DC characters are all kind of getting together, and, 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 and again, it's, it's kind of dubbed Justice League Dark. That was what the, uh, I guess that's the true title, according to Variety, is Justice League Dark, and that was a comic book series as well, too. So it kind of, you know, it has, it has these um, people all around. Welcome at D. Gagernot. Oh, man, these usernames are just killing me. <laughs> I, think they but do I love it. Purpose. I hope I got. I know. I hope. Well, I hope. You know. We're 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 announcing their usernames on air. So hopefully, um, coming with like at Paco or something like or at like, <laughs> you know, at at like Piz. You know, or another P one. But welcome on the show as well too. Um, the supernatural angle is great, except the director now is going to be Doug Lehman, who was supposed to be directing Gambit, starring Channing Tatum. You know, what usually. So I have, I have friends in the business. Um, and I have, uh, he's a very talented director, and he gives me the, the inside info on how to get a movie made, and he's continually up against, you know, funding issues. Funding is always the big thing in movies, right? Like, you need to get, you know, especially if you're not, like, a, like a director who has a, a substantial credit list, right? You need to get funding. So, he, you know, you can get overseas funding. So, if you have a budget of $20 million, he's actually gotten budgets of $10 million. Like, he's gotten companies, foreign investors or, or, or domestic investors to say, I will put up $10 million, but they always come back with, and I'll give you the other $10 million if you can get a known star in the movie. Gambit has a known star. It has Channing Tatum. It has Magic Mike himself. So it's amazing to me that this thing continually gets delayed, and now the director who was supposed to take over for that movie is now off on Justice League Dark. So a win for DC... Again, it's not a loss for Marvel. The, the Fox universe is different. It's not Marvel Studios. Uh, we've talked in the past also. Again, you can go on our SoundCloud page, soundcloud.com slash Secrets of the Sire, and you can check out some of the podcasts we've had. There's rumors that Fox is going to do the Sony thing, which they should. I mean, there's no question about it. They should. Uh, they should let Marvel Studios run the creative direction. Uh, X-Men Apocalypse. We didn't even talk about X-Men Apocalypse in our summer recap. <laughs> right, yeah. And, and it just goes to show, it, it kind of flatlined also. Yeah. I mean, it made money. It was a winner. It did? Yeah, it made money. Yeah, it made money. I mean, it, it, it's a winner from a uh, studio point of view that uh, the X-Men franchise is still alive and, and valid, but from a, you know, creative standpoint, from a fan standpoint, kind of flatlined now, kind of, mm -hmm. kind of tipped down a little bit. Uh, you're not going to get Michael Fassbender in the next movie. You're not going to get Jennifer Lawrence. Their contracts are up. They're big movie stars now. Uh, they're not going to stick around with it. So you're essentially going to see a creative shift in what Fox does, but they should, if they're smart, go fall, just fall under the umbrella of Marvel. I mean, then all of a sudden, the whole universe opens up and you can have these kind of crossovers that you couldn't have before. Right. So, but hey, bad for Gambit, good for Doug Lehman. All right, we did a little poll 
So we're wrapping up the show, so we're going to give you the, the results of the poll. And basically I said, which comic book TV universe are you looking forward to the most this fall? And we, yeah, we got a lot of last-minute votes here, which was excellent. The final results, though, was actually a tie. Uh, the Arrow, Flash, Supergirl universe, we're, mm-hmm. we're counting that as a universe, and the Marvel Netflix universe, mm-hmm. which makes sense. 21% says Walking Dead. Now, Walking Dead is like the most popular in terms of ratings, right? I mean, it, mm-hmm. it kills the ratings of all the, other, uh, all the other shows. But this is kind of why, when you ask the question, the biggest surprise of fall is going to be the lack of interest or the... Or the I don't want to say lack of interest in The Walking Dead. People will be interested to see who dies, and I think they're going to get turned off when they do find out who dies, and I think it's going to be not as great as it was. So 36% each, the Arrow Flash Supergirl and the Marvel Netflix deadlocked in. That's our first tie. Um, we have at Hybe 210516. Can I ask you what you think of Supernatural? And it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Okay, we're going to take a little quick departure from the comic book world. Always sunny in Philadelphia is amazing. It's an awesome show. I don't know if you guys watch it. It's, uh, it's on FX. Now it's on FXX. Great show. Love, love that show. Um, look, it, it, it's kind of reached that point now. It's in season 11 where they're just kind of like throwing shit against the wall and doing whatever they want. And sometimes that's the most creative and fun things. I, I mean, I think like, you know, Mac and Dennis, Dennis especially, the character, um, if you guys ever watch the show, I do recommend it. Dennis was a hip, suave you know, metrosexual guy who had it all together. He is now completely unhinged by at this point. It, he he reminds me of George Costanza. Um, oh, the, hi B two one zero five one six. My God, that's a long username. Mm-hmm. From uh, the, he says, I'm from Scotland, and they are my faves. Always wondered how they were received over here. Um, yes, favorites. So, no, I understood. Um, definitely favorites. And and yeah, no, Always Sunny is, is a great show. Supernatural, I never got into. Uh, I got to be honest. I, I I know of it. I know it's ending this year. I know that uh, Ian Summerholder and um, what's her name, uh, completely hot. She's just smoking hot. I can't remember who she is, but uh, never got into it. But uh, it has a cult following, kind of like a Buffy following. Uh, real quick, I want to thank Sam for jumping on the mic tonight. He was the co-host tonight. Thank you, thank you. Not the sidekick. Yes. I want to thank Rob K. Catch his shows Tuesday at 8 p.m. Rob and Callie show on TalkingAlternative.com. Thank you to everyone who joined us on Periscope, at Michael underscore Dolce. Thank you to everyone who joined us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Secrets of the Sire. We do this every week, this time, 8 p.m. Eastern, talkingalternative.com. Go check out michaeldolce.com and check out our Patreon page so we can make the show even better. All right, next week we're going to continue with the fall theme, but we're going to switch over to movies, Doctor Strange especially, and the whitewashing slash pro-feminist casting decision of Tilda Swinton. You are listening to the Talking Alternative Network.